Hello my friends. I'm going to show you how to drywall and finish the dome ceiling. You start by marking a reference line on the center of two of the arched ribs and these are going to be used to reference the uh, pie shape of the drywall that will be applied to this. Starting at the bottom, measure 6 inches and place a mark on this reference line uh, all the way up at every 6 inch point. Do this on both reference lines. Once you have both reference lines marked, measure the distance between each of the points and record this. This will be transferred onto a sheet of drywall. Transfer all these recorded marks onto the drywall and use this first sheet as a pattern. Make this first sheet as accurately as you possibly can. Uh, this is going to be used as the pattern and we need to repeat this quite a number of times uh, depending on how thick of a sheet of drywall you're going to be using. I'm using quarter inch sheet and I'm going to double uh, every one of the uh, pieces that's applied to the dome ceiling and that will give me a half inch finished uh, sheet that I'm working with. You want to score the front of the drywall with your utility knife and then flex the drywall and it will crack and leave the back paper hinged. Then cut through the back paper. Take note that these two vertical sides are not straight lines. They are a slight arc and that's because it's going to bend inside the dome. When I'm using this first pattern sheet, I'm using spring clip uh, clamps to hold the sheet onto the one that I'm going to cut. When you snap the drywall, you can't <clears throat> hinge this all the way back or it will rip the paper off of the back of the plaster. Before these sheets are applied to the ceiling, you need to wet the back of the sheets and let them soak for a while. This will keep the paper from splitting on the back side. Um, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes for the paper to soak. What I like to do is take uh, a couple sheets and lay them back to back, wet in between them, and that will keep the moisture from evaporating and uh, wet two at the same time then. If you're using half inch sheet supply or drywall, uh, you may have to leave these soak a long time to soften the plaster that's in between so that the plaster will bend rather than crack. The quarter inch is thin enough that it can bend fairly good without cracking the plaster inside. Secure this sheet up with drywall screws. 
place the screws approximately six inches apart around the perimeter of the pie shaped drywall. After you get all the sheets screwed to the ceiling, there's going to be some pretty good gaps in between some of these. Uh, to fill the gaps, you don't want to use your drywall compound. You want to mix up plaster of Paris. This will cure relatively quick and it does not shrink. So that's the big advantage of using the plaster of Paris. When mixing the plaster, work in small batches. Uh, you have maybe 15 to 20 minutes of work time before it sets up. When you mix your second batch, make sure that you clean your tool and the bucket that you're mixing in, leaving a little bit of the uh, plaster debris acts as a catalyst and it'll make the new batch set up very rapidly. So remember to work very clean in between batches. Here is the first coat, ceiling coat, um, not a ceiling coat, first coat of uh, plaster of Paris. <clears throat> this fill all the large gaps. Um, you have to work in small batches because it sets up so quickly. I use about a cup of powder at a time and that just about gives me enough to uh, use it before it sets. And what I use the, uh, on the inside of the dome, these are uh, auto body plastic uh, spatulas. They have rounded corners and they flex. So um, you use the first, the smaller one first and it'll conform to inside the sphere. The uh, hard, uh, rigid metal spatulas or trowels for drywall just not going to cut it. Uh, they have sharp corners that'll cause scraping and gouging uh, as you're forming inside that that dome and this one here uh, just blends in real nice as you're forming you just uh, apply the pressure it will conform right to the shape of the dome I can't see any other uh, tool that would work better than this I'm applying the first layer of drywall compound over the uh, plaster of Paris. And you can work uh, right away after the plaster sets up. Uh, you don't have to wait for it to dry out completely. And you want to embed uh, tape over all of the seams. I'm using a fiberglass tape on all these seams. This tape is a very thin tape and there's no problem with allowing it to crisscross uh, and build up layers over the center of the dome. It's so thin that it won't even be noticed. As soon as the tape is on, apply another coat of drywall compound directly over the tape. Work from the center of the tape towards both of the ends. That'll keep you from peeling the tape back off where you just applied it. I'm using this uh, fiber 
but it's really tough. It doesn't go this way. Um, it's supposed to be superior to using paper. Um, it's kind of porous, so the uh, uh, spackling can be pushed through it. Um, doesn't have a tendency to form bubbles, and uh, once in a while, if you don't uh, get enough drywall compound underneath your uh, tape, it'll uh, dry the paper up and form a bubble underneath, which will be like a blister or be sane after it's all cured. So this is some new stuff that uh, I think might work great, especially on the ceiling. And I'm using the lightweight drywall compound so I can uh, build it up and not have it uh, falling down. Uh, the other thing that I found by using the uh, plaster is it cures, it doesn't uh, plaster Paris, it cures and it doesn't shrink and like I'm, I just applied the plaster, it's set up and I'm putting uh, spackling compound right on it now. So uh, it speeds the job up by having to, not to wait for the curing time. When you work with drywall compound, you usually have to apply three individual coats and let them dry in between. With the dome structure, however, because the lower end is individual facets, kind of like uh, facets on a diamond, uh, they're, they form a round perimeter, round circle, but they're all uh, straight edges and the bottom of the dome is like that. So right where the seams are you have to have additional compound to build that up and make it more rounded. This is one step where you may need to get an additional set of hands involved. I'm cutting out the uh, round circle uh, where this flat ceiling meets the dome and I'm using a roto zip to do that. Because of the large diameter of this circle I'm having a large sheet that's going to come down on top of my head so the extra hands are going to save me a little bit here. This operation is going to be repeated four more times. I think in this situation I got about six sheets that I'm cutting like this. This is an operation where you want to be wearing a dust mask. The perimeter of the dome needs sheets of drywall attached to the, that also and it needs to be bent. So here I'm wetting the individual pieces in my sink. If you notice where the dome is coming down and meeting these individual sheets there will be some large gaps. These will also have to be filled with plaster of Paris. If you work careful applying the plaster into the dome and on the seams, um, you should be able to finish without sanding. Here I'm finishing by using a wet sponge and rubbing, rubbing the uh, seams and joints all down. If you have ever worked sanding drywall, you'll know that uh, the sanding dust will get through the entire house, even if you block off rooms. When you finish with this procedure and you're pretty happy with how it turned out, you want to let this dry completely and then give it a good coat of sandable primer. 
Sandable primer will allow you to uh, spackle over top of it if you see any more flaws in the job. After we finish painting the dome and the ceiling, we want to make a nice transition accent where the dome and the ceiling meet. And to do this, we're going to fabricate some custom molding. Lights on. Wonderful. Thanks for watching, my friends. Bye bye.